Here's how to construct a 21.4 MHz FM demodulator for a HP spectrum analyzer or a, any other gear which has a 21.4 MHz IF output. Uh, what this does is take the uh, final IF output um, from the spectrum analyzer in this case and it uh, FM demodulates the signal. Uh, this is useful if you want to, you know, for testing FM receivers or if you want to uh, turn your uh, spectrum analyzer into a uh, receiver essentially. Um, it's a very uh, simple design. It's based around a uh, Motorola 3361 narrowband FM IF chip. Here's the schematic. Here's the Motorola MC3361. Uh, this does the majority of all the work. It does the uh, local oscillator generation and the uh, limiting, FM limiting with the uh, quadrature coil and it gives an output signal. And it also has an optional squelch circuit. The uh, FM output is a uh, low pass filtered and uh, sent through a volume potentiometer to a LM380 2.5 watt audio amplifier. This then goes out to a speaker. Um, the 33 MC3361, you can find it in an old 49 megahertz cordless phones. Here's an example circuit board. Here's the uh, MC3361 right here. What's the? Uh, um, this device operates at 455 kilohertz, so it have a it'll have it on its own uh, IF filter, which is this little square back square box right here. This uh, limits the. Uh, uh, IF signal, the 455 kilohertz FM signal, and just kind of removes any noise, out of band noise. You're also going to need the quadrature coil. What this does is it introduces the 90 degrees phase shift and the 455 kilohertz IF signal for uh, FM demodulation. Um, here's another old 49 megahertz cordless foam, foam uh, circuit board. Here's the MC3361 down here, the uh, 455 kilohertz IF filter, again the black rectangle, here's the quadrature coil. So you'd want to um, salvage the quadrature coil, the IF filter, and the MC3361 from these uh, circuit boards. To convert the 21.4 megahertz IF input, down to uh, 455 kilohertz, which this chip operates, we need to have a uh, external 20.945 megahertz crystal and the supporting loading capacitors. These crystals are hard to find, but since um, 21.4 megahertz is a common IF in two-way radios, if you uh, search your local ham fest for a, just buy a bunch of different radios, you're bound to find one eventually. That's kind of what I did. You might have to buy five different radios before you find one, but you will find one eventually. After you, you're going to want to keep the supporting loading capacitors for that particular crystal, though. The one I'm using had 22 picofarads and 47 picofarads. Um, you may have to experiment a bit with these value capacitors if uh, it doesn't uh, oscillate. On the or the RF input to the MC3361 has an impedance of around 3,300 ohms, and we're just taking a 50 ohm straight input, so we need to have a LC. Uh, this is a L network impedance conversion. This inductor right here is three micro Henrys. I wound it on a T-50-2 uh, powdered iron toroid about 25 turns of number 26 enameled wire for approximately 3 microhenries. doesn't have to be exact. In the, you have an 18 picofarad shunt capacitor. Here's the actual circuit itself. BNC input for the 21.4 MHz IF input comes around. Here's our uh, 3 microhenry inductor, 18 picofarad capacitor. 
a series 0.01 into a, a pin 16, I believe, of the uh, 3361. Here you can see the 20. Here's a 20.945 megahertz crystal right here in the loading capacitors. This blue rectangle is the uh, CFV455D Murata IF filter. The D version has about a plus or minus 10 kilohertz 6D bandwidth. I also have on my vista modulator has an option for a wide and narrow FM or IF select. When you select the wide, it just, uh, I have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor that just bypasses the, uh, the IF filter right here. This is really common for like data signals or if, uh, you're gonna find when we use the spectrum analyzer, since it's not synthesized, the, uh, frequency drifts just a bit, and so it's easier to switch to wide IF. So everything's uh, within the band. This is the quadrature coil. This is the most, probably the most important part of the FM demodulator. It uh, introduces a 90 degrees, phase, 90 degrees phase shift onto the IF signal. It's essentially just a uh, one millihenry, mil one millihenry variable inductor in parallel with 120 picofarad capacitor. We add a resistor across it called a dequeuing resistor. Um, this is because this isn't exactly on frequency and, and this kind of widens the queue, widens the bandwidth. Um, a trick you can do is to increase this value of the resistor and if you have the proper test equipment you can then um, tweak the variable inductor to uh, peak your audio output. Oh, this is a common modification like on Radio Shack scanners. Um, normally they use like a 33 kilo ohm resistor. So you have low audio output because it's kind of it's a wide band you know, signal. But what you can do is just replace it with a higher value uh, resistor and tweak it yourself. Just a simple mod you can do to a Radio Shack scanner. You can also, we can also do the same thing here. Um, This circuit up here is called a squelch circuit. What this does is it's a looks fairly complicated. Um, you know, it doesn't work exact. I took it straight from the data sheet. What it does is it, it uh, shunts the output of the uh, audio output when there's no uh, basically no received signal. Otherwise, you're going to hear uh, static all the time. This uh, uses a 10k ohm uh, potentiometer. I got a panel mount potentiometer right here. It just kind of sets the, uh, it sets a, like a voltage level to uh, determine, you know, the uh, RF input um, power essentially before it, the squelch breaks, and that just uh, keeps it from hearing the noise. On the pin nine, this is, if you ever heard somebody refer to discriminator audio, that's what they're talking about. This is raw, um, demodulated audio from this chip. This is handy for like uh, when you're decoding pagers and you know stuff like that. You tap this line. This is because there's no filtering. This is before any filtering or pre-emphasis and for any amplification or anything. This is just raw audio, demodulated audio output. You have a simple low pass filter and a uh, DC blocking capacitor. Just kind of roll off um, any high frequency stuff. Then a 10k ohm panel mount potentiometer for our volume control. It also acts as our power in this particular uh, schematic. So our demodulated audio then goes to uh, another series of non-polarized, uh, we use non-polarized capacitors here, which, which you want to use usually for uh, audio work. A shunt 100 picofarad capacitor just to remove any uh, RF carrier or any RF noise that kind of seeped in into a, our LM380 audio amplifier, final amplifier. Uh, it requires a very large heat sink ground on these uh, uh, ground pins. And I'm running that straight from the 12 volts with a, I threw a, a series of 1 ohm resistor just to 
they kind of act as a fuse just in or and to knock down any uh, any noise or anything on the with a nice big 1000 microfarad capacitor right on the uh, DC input. Uh, the audio output of the amplifier and that's this is called the Zobol network. This kind of shunts any high frequency noise to prevent uh, oscillation. to a series 10 ohm in series with 10 ohms in series with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We have a large uh, DC blocking capacitor, which you always have on these types of audio amplifiers. Make sure the plus goes to the uh, amplifier side. And I have a 8 ohm 5 watt speaker. I mounted the speaker internally. This is just a, I don't remember where I found it, just a regular speaker from like a stereo or something, nothing fancy. I'm using a printer switch case to house this circuit as you can see. And I just took a piece of perf board. I cut a big hole and I put a piece of perf board and painted it so it looks nice. That'll be our audio output. You can hear a little bit of a residual hiss. So as the squelch circuit doesn't isn't you know perfect, but. Uh, This is what's breaking. Now for a test. I have a RF signal generator set up to 21.4 megahertz. Negative 100 dBm right now. That's at uh, negative. That's straight input at negative 100 dBm. That is a one kilohertz tone at a five kilohertz deviation. That's negative 80 dBm. As you can see, it's pretty much full quieting already. Um, these chips don't like having lots of application before them. You can have like a, if you can add an um, external amplifier, keep it around, you know, 10 dB or so. Uh, too much gain um, will actually cause distortion in intermodulation products. It has a very low third order intercept. So, um, as you can hear, this is negative 80 dBm, which is, uh, you know, pretty darn good. There's negative 50 dBm. You know, it's already. No problems. That's the wide filter. Okay, I have it in narrow filter right now. It's back to negative 100 dBm. There's the sculpt. Now I can rotate the sculpt setting to uh, kill your low. See if it doesn't. Uh, it kind of sets the uh, threshold of what it breaks. I'm going to increase the signal that level. Squelch works, you just uh, based on the uh, it generates a voltage based on the input power, and then it uh, has a, acts like a comparator basically. Now, for our spectrum analyzer output. This is going to the 21.4 megahertz IF output on the back of my HP 8569B. I'm going to try to uh, tune in a local FM broadcast signal. We have to switch over to zero span. You can see the tuning is still a little touchy, but uh, it's 
the FM uh, broadcast signal at 101.1 uh, megahertz. That's the wide FM, uh, wide uh, bandwidth, narrow band selecting. It, you can't even hear anything with it when you switch over to the narrow, it's just uh, too narrow. You have to remember, um, you may have to adjust the uh, resolution bandwidth on the spectrum analyzer itself. Right now I have it at a 1 megahertz wide uh, resolution because I'm um, FM uh, broadcast FM signals are very wide band, and so if I were to switch to like a narrow band resolution filter, I don't even think you'd hear anything really. It'd be so distorted, or you know. So just uh, it's you're gonna have to kind of fiddle with it if when you actually want to hear real signals, but uh, it is possible to do it. Um. There's other, um, you don't have to listen to, you know, essentially music or, uh, voice. It's also good for, uh, uh just hearing that, like, if you have a scanner or something, or a real communications receiver, you know, you can listen to for, like, uh, bursts of data, or bursts of, uh, you know, noise and stuff like that, that'll tell you, you know, if you need to, like, analyze your signal. I'm back on the signal generator again. That's, uh, there isn't uh, really much to it, uh, like I said, the only hard part is finding this crystal, but that's just, you have to, you're going to have to go and look for it, basically, and salvage it from an old uh, two-way radio. And then, uh, if it's using a 21.4 megahertz IF, you might be able, some of, you might even be using the Mo Motorola, uh, similar Motorola IC, so that you can uh, salvage the uh, quadrature coil on the IF filter from that uh, unit as well. Oh, um, you'll sometimes see uh, this crystal tied to the 5 volt line. The reason they do that is because there is a DC uh, bias that comes out of one of these pins, and the DC on the crystal can uh, unload it essentially, causing it to change frequency. So, the trick they'll do is to uh, tie the other side to the uh, power line, the power rail. That way, the uh, there's no essential voltage difference across it. But you can usually get by with just uh, tying it to ground. It kind of simplifies the circuit. Though that is something to keep uh, keep in mind. The quadrature coil does have have to tie back to the five volt rail. You'll see that. Uh, I put a series 10 ohm resistor just to DQ it to act as a low pass filter that the power gets fed through the inductor that's the bit into the quadrature uh, circuit so remember to uh, do not tie this to ground that has to be tied to the 5 volts you can experiment with the you know, resistor values in the scroll circuit if you want it doesn't uh, sound right but uh, I usually just leave it it's not that big of a deal um, that's pretty much it you just have to uh, um, you can get by just adding a 50 ohm resistor to ground if you don't want to, if you can't make this res this inductor. Um, especially if you're just using it as a test network or a or test circuit, you know, or you have a high level uh, signal. But uh, for proper impedance matching, you want to have that uh, little L network right there. Try to keep all your, uh, you want to use a little coaxial cable on your RF input and for your IF 
um, section or, or selecting switch up here. I have a you know coaxial cable, common ground, switching in and out of the uh, IF filter circuit down here. Uh, that should all be with a you know small diameter coaxial cable. You don't need to use an LM380 either. Um, I just wanted something big and loud, usually for your test bench. You know, you can buy just using an LM386 and a little uh, speaker or even a headphone output. You know, something like that. All right, that should be it.